Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and this video here is going to be part number 13 of my Kenshi walkthrough and it's going to be the final part. So in the last part, number 12, we did some exploring in the Ashlands and explained more or less what to expect here. In between that part and this one, I did a bunch of leveling up for my characters. Now my characters are a bit more beefy. Uh, most people have toughness 70 plus. More of them have toughness 80 plus, which is going to be... Um, more or less, I would say, required for the boss fight we have coming up. You'll be able to see how easily these guys uh, wipe out the skeletons here. We shouldn't... Nobody should go down. There we go. And they should be able to repair themselves just fine. And we can basically move on from there. Hunky-dory. Not much to worry about. So where our... Our goal with this video is to go to Catlon's Exile right here. And we're going to kill Mad Catlon. I'm going to get into a few fights on the way there to wear my team down because I want to make this a bit more realistic that like uh, basically make it similar to what you would be going through on your way here. And of course, beep goes down pretty fast because beep is squishy as are most hivers. However, beep is fun to bring with us because beep is beep. As you can see, he has 79 toughness and he's still going down pretty quickly and easily. Come on, beep, let's go. Some of the characters you will have to deal with their quirks if you want to bring them along. A lot of the hivers are very, very squishy like that. And these clouds that you just see my characters gag at, they, uh, they're they gas clouds when you run through the Ashlands. They will be pretty common. Um, you can easily dodge them or you can just use like gas masks and that will remedy the issue. I love how the skeletons don't aggro me. Those skeletons uh, basically came running out of nowhere to aggro me. And the other ones just keep on walking. This is the... Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the route. Yeah, this is the route up into Mad Catlon. There's only like one route you can go in order to get up there. And it can be a little bit tedious to find if you've never um, been there before. Because navigating this zone is not easy. There's a lot of places you can't walk. And it, uh, it makes it just difficult. So we're entering basically into the area which could be known as Catlon's Exile. This whole area I would consider to be Catlon's Exile. You can't go down there as much as uh, you may want to. Uh, these two Ashlands domes are the two main things that we're going to be going into. This first dome here, let me, I'll show you when we actually get closer to it. So this big dome here is the first one. This is the one with the 120 storm thralls in it. You can see them populating into the world somewhat and then depopulating because I'm not inside there. This other big dome right here, this is the one with Mad Cat Lon inside. He's down here in the bottom, but we can't see him because we're not inside that dome yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out all 120 storm thralls first. This is going to be a fight and a half, so... Well, actually, for my characters, it won't be that hard because I have pretty high stats. But let me show you the Storm Thralls. As you can see, they don't have very good stats. 40 dex, 40 toughness, 30 strength. This is a big, big difference compared to Mad Catlon. Catlon has very, very, very good stats. So I'm just going to super speed. So if this fight gets you down and the whole journey through the Ashlands gets you down, I would actually recommend you just, after you take out the, all of the Storm Thralls. Oh, hold on. They're starting to run. Make sure your characters don't run into the adjacent dome and aggro Mad Cat line because that would not be good. I love seeing the Storm Thrall bodies go flying because of the ragdoll physics. It's cute. So what I was saying though is after you get done with this fight, I would honestly recommend to just hang out down here until all of your characters are healed enough to take on the rest of uh, the area. And of course, don't forget to loot this area too. There will be a lot of loot at this um, Ashlands Dome, which we'll probably do while our characters are resting because I want to show you the loot that's here. I'm just going through like turbo speed right now, making sure everything's dead. When the enemies pop back up, they'll immediately get knocked down. Ooh, ooh, don't run over their characters. I don't know where you're going. Once you do take out these storm thralls, you'll never have to do it again. So that is a big bonus to doing this. 
like I said, this this building will be a very good area to rest before you challenge Mad Catlon. Also, if you decide to uh, constantly do like an import game trick for Mad Catlon, runners limping his butt off because Mad Catlon is worth fighting multiple times over and over and over again because he has extremely high stats. He's one of the best enemies to fight to level up on. This would be a good spot to just chill in between the import games. You would log into all of the Storm Thralls each time you imported, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. They're easy enough, and plus, they'll raise your combat stats a teeny-weeny bit. There is no other named enemies in this base aside from the Storm Thralls. It is just exclusively the Storm Thralls, so keep that in mind. So far, not much good loot. An AI core. Not bad, not bad. So, Mad Catlon, I will start explaining that fight. This is going to obviously be the hardest fight in the game that you've had to do, most likely. Uh... The only enemy with higher stats that I know of is the King of the Southern Hive, but you can kind of cheese that fight if you want. This one's a lot harder to cheese because of the environment that you're surrounded with. However, you're going to find Mad Catlon sitting on his throne when you first enter the Ashland Dome, and there's going to be a little bit of dialogue when you first approach him and engage him. He'll uh, basically go through saying that it wasn't his fault, it was the human's fault, and blah 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 justifying you know all of the evils that he did throughout his uh lifespan as a skeleton guess you can call it a lifespan and then the fight begins he has about 100 stats in all of the stats that are important more or less and as you could imagine that is quite difficult to take out with your characters um, due to how Kenshi is designed, you're only able to fight bosses one-on-one -on -one unless you're using mods or unless you've, done, you've used the forgotten set editor and you um, edited the game files yourself, which is something that I personally have done. Apparently that Storm Thrall is running around with his head chopped off. Cute. Um, anyway, unless you edit the game files, you have to fight enemies one-on-one -on -one in this game. If you have edited the game files, you'll be able to possibly fight Mad Catlon two on one or three on one or I think it's up to like four on one. Um, this obviously makes the fight significantly easier. Sorry, hiccups. This also means you won't have to level up as much before challenging him. Like my characters right now, I've gotten uh, stats in the 70s or 80s for all everybody that's with me here. And I did that for a reason more or less. I did that because I know I'm going to need high stats in order to even hit mad catlon and deal damage to him and i wanted basically he's going to have to work through 20 of my characters fighting them one at a time until eventually he either goes down or i lose the fight that's ultimately what it's going to come down to so my characters are still i mean my characters are mostly healed let me see how long this video has been going on so oh only eight minutes okay this video is probably not going to be long in comparison of all of the other ones that i've made Hopefully I can end it in under 15 minutes, but maybe under 20. So what we're, we are going to do is I'm going to send my characters in one at a time because I actually use that mod where I can fight multiple enemies at once uh, or multiple. I can use multiple characters to fight a single enemy and multiple enemies can fight a single one of my characters. So it makes the game harder for some for I would say the majority of the game. It makes the makes harder because more enemies can fight you. But for bosses, it makes them quite easy. So we're not going to cheese the fight using that. We're going to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. And let me actually uh, put the rest of my characters as passive because I don't want them to interfere. So here goes Almar inside to fight uh, Mad Catlon. As you can see, he just got activated. He's going to blah, 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 my judgment, blah, blah, blah. Humans are assholes, not me. Let me drop this stuff so Almar has a... Uh, He's still a little bit encumbered, but that's fine. Now, 
here's I just clicked on Mad Cat Line. You can see his stats. He's going to basically beat the shit out of Almar. As you can see, he already is beating the shit out of Almar. Actually, runner, no, you're kind of useless. I don't. Let's do you and Crumble John. Or runner will leave you out there. Yeah, you go out there. Almar, are you. Like, see how badly he's beating up Almar? And Almar doesn't have bad stats either. Almar has 84 toughness. <laughs> Almar's body just got shot. Where did it go? Oh my. That's funny. Look at him go. Woo! I'm going to have to reload in order to get him back. That's funny. Well, I think it's safe to say that he lost. <laughs> he got slingshotted way away. That's cute. Where are you going, Crumble John? Nah, get back here. You you fight Mad Cat Lon this time. It's your turn. Crumble John, like, look at his stats. 71 defense, 54 strength. So his strength is a little low. His dexterity is very low for the weapon that he's using. That's one reason we won't be able to damage Mad Cat Lon. And his toughness is 79. Ooh, he hit him. Crumble John hit him. The, mostly, this, the, the, these are, this is how the fight's going to go. Almost all of my characters will be lucky to get one hit off. And Mad Cat Lon is just going to hit all of them. What is Almar running back in for? Oh, Medic. Okay, they're all a lot of them are running in for medic jobs right now. Which I don't really want them to do, but I can't really blame them. This is one good thing about Mad Catlon too, as you can see. I don't know really what his problem is, but he doesn't always engage. So you can more easily challenge him one-on-one -on -one this way. Let me see. Apparently, I lost Kang at some point, and I didn't realize. Because I don't have him here on my team. He was one of my better fighters, too. What are you doing, Almar? Protect allies? No. go. You're not set to passive, so go over there and don't protect allies. That's what I want you to do. See how Infinite Wing Wang is just getting his ass beat? He's almost... His left arm almost got completely severed. There we go. And if you uh, rewind the video there, you were actually able to see the arm fly off. And you can see it rolling off the wall in the upper right-hand corner of the screen right now. This The reason for this, too, is uh, Mad Cat Lon uses the highest DPS pure damage weapon in the game. So he does insane damage. Despite Infinite Wing Wing ha having uh, 74 toughness, he's still getting his ass handed to him by Mad Cat Lon. There we go. Bard got a lucky hit on because he was sitting down. Bard's going to get obliterated. Bard's down. Dr. Chung, where are you? Oh. Well, I guess that explains why you didn't... Uh, didn't come when I called you. Chad, let's see what my... Uh, Martial artist does. Get in there, Chad. Punch him in the face. Ouch. 82 immediately. One hit and Chad's almost gone. Bang. Another one in the right arm. Well, Chad got one hit in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys need to get away. Jarvel, you uh you're probably not gonna have much luck either. Oh, he hit him for two points of damage. 
The reason my characters aren't doing good damage is because I've only apparently focused on raising their toughness instead of their uh, dexterity as well. And I really needed to raise dexterity. Wow, I think he hit him for 84. No, he hit him for 8 probably. I think my Mad Cat Lon is bugged because I've never seen him act this way. Usually, he always fights everybody, and he doesn't let me do what I'm doing right now. See how uh, my characters keep running in and healing the character that gets knocked unconscious? He's never let me do that before. I kind of like this, though. It's exactly what I wanted to do for this video. Challenge them one-on-one, -on -one, over and over and over. Hmm, Lee Deeps is doing pretty well. I think he's doing a lot better because his dexterity is a lot higher. He doesn't have as high of a dexterity penalty as the... Uh, oh, never mind. I'm looking at Mad Catlon, not Lee Deeps. Okay. Well, his, yeah, technically his dexterity was still higher. Dr. Chung, let's run in with you. As you can see, the Mad Cat Lon is still monologue. Oh, Dr. Chung got in three lucky hits. Oh, Dr. Chung is whooping Mad Cat Lon's ass. What weapon are you using? Ah, horse chopper. Very fast, quick attacks. That's why he got so many lucky ones in. Come on, Dr. Chung. I'm very happy with how he performed. He's about to lose his leg probably with one hit, but I'm very happy with, uh, Ooh, man. He is beating the shit out of Mad Cat Lon. Very happy with this, Dr. Chung. You will get a place in history. He is the Holy Phoenix reborn as far as I'm concerned. Okay, Reaver Slave. Let's uh, prove to me that it was worthwhile taking you in from the Reavers. Nope. And actually, Reaver Slave, you just got Dr. Chung knocked out. So you got, like, your main hero guy knocked out again. So I give you a D minus. Ooh, he hit him twice, though. Three times. Okay, I'll give you a, a, D, a D minus. Eh, actually, you know what? That's, that's too mean. I'll give you a B plus. D minus is too mean. Most other people barely even hit him. You hit him like four times. Everybody gets an A for effort, though. A, a, par a participation trophy. Of course. Ooh! One hit for Reaver Slavin. He's down. I guess because he... Oh, no. He just got hit in the head. He has a decent head, though. I mean... I guess the protection... Uh, the coverage is okay, but I guess the protection was not good enough because it's light armor. One hit and just out. Like I said before, too, before we started this fight, I could easily Zerg this boss if I wanted to. But I think that goes... You can't do that unless you're using mod or you've edited the game file, so I'm not going to do that. I'm doing it one-on-one -on -one like you would have to. As you can see, though, we've done ooh, we've done a decent amount to Mad Cat Lon. His dexterity is down a bit. His strength is down a bit. His toughness and defense are still perfect, though. Obviously. Come on, Stubbs. Let's see what you... Ooh! Ow, that was a big hit. 85. Yep, down. I don't think he hit him once, so he gets, like, a low rating. He gets, like, an F. 
Jewel, just chill. You're late to the party. Most of my characters are injured or, or have been knocked out. The only ones that haven't are Beep and Agnew, and they're not going to do much. Beep's going to... a few hits. There we go. Beep always goes down pretty easily. Squishy Hivers. And Agnew... I don't think he's going to impress me, but we'll see. Of course, he hits him right in the head. What? He went after Beep again. No, don't hit Beep. You... <gasps> he killed Beep! He killed Beep! What a monster! You bastard. You absolute madman. Mad Catlon. Mad Catlon the madman. We are killing him. Justice will be ours. Mad Catlon needs to rot in hell after that. How dare you? How dare you kill Beep? That is cruel. That is just too much. What did Beep ever do to you besides attack you? In your own house. Break into your house and attack you. Yeah, yeah. Two people lost an arm, but nobody cares about that. We lost Beep. If this wasn't the end of the game and the final boss and I was done with the save file after this, I would reload because I'm upset about that. So we lost an arm, a leg, two, two arms. And that's a leg over there. And beep. And beep. No, not beep. Okay, where are you, Mononuke? Or however it is pronounced. The fucking wolf from Studio Ghibli. Get over here. Come on, you can get inside, boy. Okay, we need to, uh... Get up here and pick him up. Let's bring him inside. Is Mad Cat Lon throwing my characters out? Yeah, he is. He does this. Uh, he'll throw your characters outside if, um... He knocks them out inside. So get in there, Studio Ghibli Wolf. Yeah, that's it, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so cheating because Mad Cat Lon is carrying one of my characters out, but I am I am content with that because he was carrying Beep's dead corpse outside. Now, if you want to see what Mad Cat Lon drops, he drops an AI core, the CPU of Cat Lon, and the Falling Sun Me Too weapon, which is the highest damage weapon, pure damage weapon in the game. So, CPU of Cat Lon, this is what it says. CPU of Cat Lon, one of the founding skeletons of the old empire. They sought to undo the crimes and errors of skeleton kind and redeem themselves to mankind, though the humans had long forgotten any of it. He eventually became a dictator. As the empire started falling apart, he tried harder to force it back together. And that is uh, essentially what happened throughout the entire downfall of uh, the second empire, which Mad Cat Lon was in control of. So we're stealing his weapon. We're killing him by taking his uh, AI core and the CPU. Because that asshole will kill Beep. And that's all. Now, Mad Cat Lon is dead. As you can see, dead. And so is Beep. Rest in, rest in peace, Beep. You, you died in this timeline. It was a good fight. We will, we will make sure that history books say that Beep fought against the 120 Storm Thralls. And the odds were against him. And he went down in a goddamn blaze of glory. Rest in peace, Beep. Very upsetting. Very distressing. But there you go. That's how hard the fight is. And uh, as you can see, if you have a character with that is a, just a tad bit too squishy, like Mr. Beep here, he got hit for 98 in the chest. And as you can see, Beep has... Or sorry, that's Agnew's chest. Let me show you Beep's chest. I'm pretty sure Beep is in the... Okay. Beep is in a very crappy chest, so that's part of the reason he got such uh, clobbered in the chest. As you can see, Beep's gear wasn't the best, so I guess you could blame me part way for uh, what happened, the the horrible fate that he endured. It's because I didn't gear poor little Beep properly. As you can see, other people lost. Eh, the other losses aren't important. Only Beep is. But that's really all there is to it. Let's uh, let's end this Kenshi series the only way that it could possibly be ended. Actually, you know what? No, we're going to uh, we're going to include Beep in the ending, his sacrifice. It cannot be in vain. Come on, Beep, let's go. Over here, Studio Ghibli dog.
Come on. Since I am playing guy with a dog playthrough, I figured it's appropriate that my dog be in the in, in the final shot. But there you go. That would be the end of my Kenshi playthrough. Uh, sadly, Beep did not make it to the end, though we tried. He was there with us until the final fight. But that's really all there is. Once you complete this boss, you could officially say that you've completed the hardest challenge in the game, defeating the end boss of Kenshi, Mad Cat Lon. Uh, there will be some dialogue changes from this point on. Basically, I'm pretty sure some NPCs in the game will recognize that you take down Mad Cat Lon. Tinfist, Tinfist, sorry, is probably one of those NPCs. But aside from that, you've accomplished most there is in the game, and the only other thing to do would basically be start over and do another file. Anyway, that is the end of my Kenshi walkthrough. I hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough. Hopefully I educated you guys and taught you a bunch about the game and help you enjoyed it. Uh, that's, of course, one of the main things that I was aiming for. If I forgot anything, left anything out, or got anything wrong, of course, please let me know in the comments section below. And aside from that, I will catch you guys around in any future Kenshi videos I do or the next game I cover. Peace.